So a plain lack of faith. We have to pray with trust that God will answer our prayers as He sees fit. And it may not be how we see fit, but if we doubt, in other words, if we just pray about something and we really don't think God's going to pay any attention to it, we're just going to do it, that's a waste of time. That's what James says. You have to ask in faith, not doubting at all. You cannot doubt in your faith. So just look at some of the hindrances to prayer. Or one of these, is that what's keeping your prayer from being answered? Wrong attitudes, disobedience, selfishness, a lack of faith. There are several essentials, the Bible says, to acceptable prayer. Prayer is not just something we can haphazardly do. The Bible says there are essentials to it. And maybe the most basic one is something Paul told the church in Colossae, in Colossians chapter 3. <clears throat> in this particular section, he's been talking about the new man and what this new person is supposed to be like and, and things that he was supposed to put off and things that he was supposed to put on. And in verse 17 of that third chapter, Paul writes, "...and whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus." giving thanks to God the Father through Him. He says everything, everything you do in word or deed, it doesn't make any difference what it is, everything is to be done in the name of the Lord Jesus. But what does that mean? It means we do that by His authority. And where does His authority come from? It comes from the Word. That's how we know what God's will is. That's why. That's how we know we're doing something by Christ's authority is if we do it according to His Word. The inspired writer John says much the same thing in 1 John 5.14. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 14. Verse 14, now this is the confidence that we have in Him that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of Him. But what's the condition? If we ask anything according to His will. That's doing it in the name of the Lord Jesus. That's doing it by His authority. That's doing it with His approval. So if we don't do it according to His will, for example, I can't ask God to save someone in a way that is not according to His will. I can't. That, that would be asking not according to God's will. So I have to make sure that whatever I'm asking for is in accordance with His will. His final word that we have. I can't go beyond that in any way. So it's very important that I pray by Christ's authority with His approval. Also, I have to pray with sincerity and humility. Jesus addressed this in his again in His Sermon on the Mount. <clears throat> in Matthew chapter 6, verse 5, <clears throat> This is right before he talks about his uh, the model prayer, the prayer for the disciples. He says in verse five, "And when you pray, because that's just that's part of being a disciple of Christ is praying. Not if we pray, but when we do, you shall not be like the hypocrites. So we need to make sure we pray sincerely, with humility, honestly." He says, what do they do? Well, they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen by men. But surely I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room and you've shut your door, pray to your Father who's in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. So our, our attitude, our sincerity has to be there for our prayers to be heard. We don't want to pray 
uh, for if we're praying publicly, especially for show or for attention. In Matthew 15, verse 8, Jesus says, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. That's the same thing He says there in Matthew 6. We can pray, but if our heart is not right, if we're not praying with sincerity, if we're not praying with, uh, with humility and honesty, then He's not going to hear us. So that's an essential uh, to our prayer life, is being sincere and being humble. With that, staying in Matthew 6 again, notice how He begins this model prayer for His disciples. In verse 9 he says, In this manner therefore pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. So our prayers need to be done in reverence and with praise. We need to pray reverently. I remember hearing a public prayer once where uh, the, uh, the man leading the prayer was very flippant when he addressed God in his prayer. Well, that's just the opposite of what Jesus says we're supposed to do. We're supposed to pray with reverence, recognizing that God, whom, to whom we're praying, is in heaven, and that His name is to be hallowed, sanctified, set apart above every other name. So, reverence in prayer is essential. It's one of those essentials to acceptable prayer. But so is praise. So is praise. We go back to the Psalms. And this one, Psalm 63. The psalmist in that particular psalm says this in verse 3. It's considered to be one of David's psalms when he was in the wilderness. In Psalm 63, verse 3, David says, Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. So when we pray, we not only want to do that with reverence, but we want to give God praise for who He is and for His qualities like loving kindness. So we want to pray sincerely. We want to pray with humility. We want to pray with reverence, giving God the respect uh, He deserves and praising Him. But also... And I think this is one we really have to think about carefully when we pray. We have to have a willingness to confess sins. If if we have the the attitude that, you know, I know I've done something wrong, but I'm not going to do anything about it. God's just going to overlook it. Not the case. 1 John chapter 1, we see this beginning in verse 7. We'll read through verse 9. 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, referring to God, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ His Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, so there's the attitude, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I must have that willingness to confess wrong. When I'm wrong, I've got to confess that I'm wrong. I have to confess it to the Father, and if I've sinned against somebody, then I need to confess to him or her. I have to be willing to do that. Otherwise, what? the blood of Jesus Christ will not cleanse me from sin. So I have to have that willingness. I have to have that desire uh, to be better, to change. One more time to the Psalms. This time, Psalms 32. Psalms 32, and we're going to look at verse 5. psalmist says, I acknowledged my sin to you, and my iniquity I have not hidden. 
I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. What do I have to be willing to do? Acknowledge my sin and not hide it and confess my transgressions to the Lord. I have to be willing to do that. And that means, of course, I have to be willing to change. Change my attitude. Change my life. Change what I do. Change what I think. Change how I speak. Which leads us to, I need to pray having a righteous life and a holy life. That needs to be my goal. To have a righteous life and a holy life. When Paul wrote his first letter to Timothy that we have recorded in 1 Timothy chapter 2, that chapter, almost the whole thing, is about prayer. And he says this in verse 8. <clears throat> this is specifically talking about the assembly, but certainly it would apply across the board. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. Paul tells Timothy, I desire therefore that the men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath, and doubting. So there's three things there that we need to be concerned about in prayer. We need to lift up holy hands. Of course, our hands can't be holy without us being holy, and so that's his whole idea is we need to live a holy life. Holy again coming from the idea of being sanctified or set apart. And he says we need to do that without wrath, without anger. And, again, like James says in James 1, without doubting. We must trust God. So, I have to be concerned with living an honest and an upright, uh, a morally upright life. I can't, uh, you know, like the old saying says, I can't live like the devil and then pray to God. doesn't work. So, an essential is doing my best to live a righteous and holy life. And the last one I mentioned, a grateful heart. Sometimes God will not answer our prayer because we're not grateful, because we're not thankful. And there's so many places that talk about that. Going all the way back to Colossians 3.17 where it said, Whatever we do uh, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through the Lord Jesus. Giving thanks to God the Father. So part of that is being grateful. Paul, in, in practically every letter that he wrote, talks about that. In Ephesians chapter 5, Paul says this in verse 20. <clears throat> says, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Always giving thanks for all things. And we do that in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you want to do a great study, do a study of all the places that talk about being thankful, being grateful, giving thanks. And it will take you a long time to look at all those. A long time. Back one more time to the Psalms. This time, Psalms 9 will be our last verse to look at. Psalms 9. This time, the very first verse. So many of the Psalms are about being thankful. And in Psalms 9, verse 1, the psalmist Again, it's supposed to be one of David's psalms. I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. I'll praise you. I'll give thanks to you, uh, the New American Standard says, with all of my heart. And notice the motivation. I will tell of all your marvelous works. So when we think about all the marvelous things that's been done by God, we are going to have a grateful heart. God is not going to listen to our prayers if we're ungrateful, unthankful, and uh, never uh, you know, go to Him and thank Him for even the small things in life. 
We need to give Him thanks at all times for all things. And certainly there are times in our lives when that's more difficult, probably like right now in our country, in our world. But there's still so many things to be thankful for. And during these times, God wants to hear that. So if you've been thinking about your prayer life, if you've been thinking about, why haven't my prayers been answered? Well, some of the reasons, and we certainly haven't touched on them all, may have been brought to your attention today. Maybe it's uh, your attitude about others, or maybe it's uh, you're not showing reverence to God, or maybe you're just not praying according to God's will. All of those things. Maybe it's just not having a grateful heart. But prayer is the most powerful thing we have, especially in times like this. It's critical. It's vital. It's essential. And so we need to know how to pray and what can hinder our prayers. Well, the Bible says that one of the things Christians can do is ask one another for help. Ask one another for help. That's one of the reasons we assemble. You know, Hebrews talks about, uh, in Hebrews 10, about let's consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. So one of the reasons we assemble is for that very thing, to, to encourage one another, help one another, consider one another, encourage all of these things. And so praying for one another is also something that needs to be a part of our our daily lives. And maybe you just need the the prayers of the congregation. So whatever it is you may need today, we encourage you to think about these things as we stand and sing this invitation song.